Welcome to another Nate and Tech review. Today we're going to be starting a three-part series of some of the Logitech equipment that I use on my gaming machine. First off, we're going to start with the G13 game board. Second episode is going to be covering my gaming G602 wireless mouse. And the third episode is going to be my mechanical uh, Logitech G910 uh, gaming keyboard. What we're going to be focusing on, I'm going to do a review um, over each one all the functions, everything that it does, how you can program them, all that, all three are completely programmable. We're also gonna get into the software a little bit so you can see how the Logitech software works with each one. And also the biggest thing is how it actually brings all three of those together and allows them to work with each other. So let's get in, let's get started on this G13 uh, game board and we'll move from there. The Logitech G13 game board is more than just a gaming device. It can be used with just about any application you want to use it for since the keys are 100% programmable. Uh, it has 25 programmable keys you can see here. It has a joystick. It is more of a left-right joystick. It's not analog like your joysticks you find on your PS4 or your Xbox controllers. It's mainly just a key this way, key, you know, push up, it's one key push left it's another key but it still definitely has its purposes it has two buttons here has a nice uh, rubberish uh, wrist wrist rest right here uh, we've got your buttons up here which I'm going to go over the display I don't remember the resolution on the display but it's just a basic LED display to give you some readouts it does have some third-party support which I will show you it's actually pretty cool uh, I use a third-party support more than I use some of the Logitech's uh, basic stuff that it's got. As you can see on it right now, it's got an analog clock, digital clock with a date and time. This button here you can program, uh, it does two functions. One, it will scroll through all of your different uh, displays. Like this one has uh, kind of like basic news. I think you can have it where it'll pull it up on your computer. This one is the of the third-party applet, so I will go over this here in a few. It's got your different profiles. You can have as many profiles as you want. Uh, some of them are pre-programmed in. If it notices that you have a game like StarCraft II, uh, if you have it on there, it'll it'll recognize the game and add it in as a as a profile, a pre-configured profile from Logitech, which you can go in and change if you want. Uh, it's got a default profile. You can scroll through them, lock them in. It's got a countdown timer and a stopwatch if you need those for anything. And then it sits you back to the normal one. Each one of these buttons will do different things. As you can see, like here, it can play, check mark. Um, on this one, it will actually change the display. So they, they have a function. These are mainly for the display. This is your backlight. You can turn it on and off. Uh, we have your, there's three memory. For each profile, you can have three separate memory settings or like kind of like sub profiles for each one. So let's say for StarCraft, you have, you set it to StarCraft 2, and then you can have a separate prof profile for Terran, Zerg, and Protoss. So you don't have to actually change profiles once you get in, you just switch which one you want. Uh, one, two, and three, and then you've got an MR, which is uh, live programming. If you want to add a function real quick, you hit that, hit what button you want to program, Type in the key sequence or the key that you want to use on your keyboard, hit it again, and it's programmed in for whichever key you, you set it for. Very easy to program. Um, love this device. I use it almost daily. I actually set it up to also use with um, my video editing software, Sony Vegas Pro, so I can actually do pretty much, I have my mouse and then I can almost do all my other keys are programmed on this. So I don't have to be jumping all over the keyboard and whatnot. I set this up kind of how I want, and I can do my video to video editing quite a bit quicker. Uh, it has some pads along the bottom so that it doesn't move around too much. Let's see what else. It is corded, so you don't have to worry about batteries charging anything like that. You know, that's pretty much the main overview of of the keys and whatnot. It does have uh, four dimpled keys that 
a lot of games will default to programming for your WASD keys. For my hands, I find that I'm stretching way up here uh, for my G4 key. So I actually, a lot of my games, I've reprogrammed it down one key because it, it feels a little bit more comfortable for my hand to use the G11 as my W and ASD keys. Not too, very simple to reprogram. Uh, we'll actually kick over to the software here in a second. I'll kind of give you a quick overview of how the software works. This is RGB, so you can change um, the color. I don't, you can do an individual key, but you can change all of the keys to one color. So you can have, you know, yellow for Protoss, red for Terran, and like a purple or whatever for your, your Zerg. So you kind of know which ones you're, you're working with. So let's hop over to the software and I'll kind of give you a quick run through on the software things. And we'll, we'll program a couple keys so you can kind of see uh, what, what kind of power you can put in each one of the key. So this is your, your main screen when you see this is the home screen. Pretty much just kind of gives you a quick overview of each. You can click on each piece and it will take you there. So here's your display options where you can switch between, it'll, when you hit that far left button, this one here, uh, it will switch between just moving to the next applet or if you, if you list the running applets, then when you hit the button, it gives you a list of which applet you want to run and you just select it and then it goes to that. I kind of prefer the switch to each one. It's less keys, I just kind of cycle through them. Left side here is all the applets. You can turn certain ones on and off if you don't want to see it in there. Like I, you know, I probably would never use the RSS reader, so I'll probably turn that one off. So there's that. We've got, this is where you program each one of the keys. So you can see here, this is, I've got, I hit uh, M1, that's green. You can do a different key color for M2. I don't think these ones are programmed with different colors. So let's say that we wanted to change G7 here. So you hit your down arrow and you can say assign a new command. You can do a key stroke. So if I wanted it just to be another letter, I would type it in there. You can do a multi-key. This is like a macro. Put your name in, then you hit your start recording. You type in whatever keys you want. I use this a lot for like renaming a bunch of files. If I have a, a whole list of a, a TV season, all of the episodes are in the season, I want them named differently. I will go through and I'll, you know, F2 key to, to rename, highlight the text that I want using how many left and right, you know, arrow keys with a shift, rename it to what I want, and then I end the recording and then I can hit, you know, the G7 button over and over and over again and it will cycle down um, through that macro that I want and it'll rename all of those files exactly how I want. Very quick, very easy. Um, if you're always filling out a form, you can have it do that, type in what you want, tab, type what you want, tab. You know, it'll, it'll completely fill out a form. So very useful for the multi-key. You can do a text block, um, something as simple as like a password. If you, know, if you wanted to really program your password into this, but it's something like that where you're always using username and password type thing. You can program in whatever text you want or a signature. Uh, so that's kind of what this one's for. Uh, your mouse function. If you want to use a specific key for mouse function, uh, left click, right click, all that kind of stuff, you can kind of see how all these, you know, your options here. You have media buttons. So if you don't have a keyboard that has media buttons, you can program uh, specific media things into your, into any of these keys, you know, next track, volume up and down, all that kind of stuff. Got the option for hotkeys if you want to close a window, maximize a window, cut, copy, paste, all that kind of stuff. I'll be going over this one a little bit. Um, I actually use this. Th this is going to be a three-part review. So the second part is going to be my G602 mouse, and it has some buttons on the on the side of it. And I actually use for my Windows profile. I actually use a cut, copy, edit, or cut, copy, and paste on those keys so I don't have to hit Control C all the time. I can actually just use the buttons right out there on the mouse when I'm in Windows. When I switch to a game, it, it changes those buttons to other things. And we'll kind of go over that a little bit as well. You can set up as a shortcut if you want to open an application, a certain function, which is kind of open up another application as well. You can have specific applications, calculator, my computer, whatnot. Um, you, if you use Ventrilo, I've never used this, so I don't have too much information on it, 
but I'm guessing that it, it's a voice activated type application. So you can uh, use it to, to control Ventrilo, the Ventrilo application. So there's all your different keystrokes, how you can program each one of the keys, and that is any of these four rows. You can even program the, the joystick to do whatever four buttons you want. It also does have a down click. So it's actually five keys there, and then these two can be whatever you want. So a lot of programmability there. Go over to, okay, we already did the applets. So now you can program all of your colors. If you want M1 to be red, hit red. M2, I want, I'll leave that one as green. Three will do is blue. So then as you cycle through these, it changes the color. Here's all of your profiles. You can add in a game. For some reason it doesn't want to let me add anything in here. I basically just, this is just the basic software. I don't have any games installed on this laptop, so it's really not going to be picking any of them up. The StarCraft one that you saw was actually one that is stored in onboard memory. You can store some of your, you know, if you have a specific profile for Windows or a specific game and you're taking this with you and you're going to be using a buddy's laptop or his gaming machine at his house and you, you know, you're really set on how this, this works, you can actually take those profiles with you, plug it in, and it works basically like a keyboard. It's just programmed already. So nice addition to that that they thought of. Uh, this, last this last piece doesn't really have anything to do with programming, but it can actually show you what keys you use the most, things like that, kind of like a, a heat map. So it shows you, okay, I've pressed, you know, I'm always using the G11 and the G17. I use more than any other keys. So like that, it's, you know, if it's, you find a use for that, it it's here. Um, so that's the main rundown of your keys, the programming, stuff like that. The other thing I wanted to show you, so we're gonna kick back to the display on this. You'll notice right here, this is, so this is the, this is the third party applet. So it's got my date, what day it is, the time, it's got my CPU usage, and it'll usually do how many cores you have. So up to, I think I believe it would do up to four. It kind of gives you your average CPU usage, it gives you your memory, how much memory you're using out of your total, and a little over half. And then it's also got your your network in and out. So how many you know megabytes or kilobytes you're using as far as your network going in and out. I'm not using very much right now. On and you can program these to do whatever you want. I the four main ones I use are Fraps. It is. It works with this, so it actually tells you when you're playing your game. It'll actually give you how many frames per second, you know, you're you're playing at. So right now I'm actually recording on the laptop, so it's recording at 30 frames a second. So it's actually showing that. I have another app which is called SpeedFan, and it won't show up correctly on here. I think it actually displays. It'll bring up the the box, but I don't think it shows anything. The laptop that I have is actually, air, it's just straight air codes, no fans in it. So it'll just bring up a straight box there. And then there's another one. The other one that I use is called, oh, let's see. It's called Core Temp. And I'll link all of this stuff in the description if you're interested in any of these uh, applications. Okay, so you can see here, here's the fan one. Now my gaming machine, I've got five fans in it, and I actually have a program to cycle through the fans, and it'll have a, a three-letter description. So I'll have like, for the CPU fan, it's CPU. For the front fan, it's FRN or FRT, how, you know, however you want to name it. So you know what fan, and then it'll actually give you the, how many RPMs the, the fan is rotating at. Let me bring up core temp here. Well, that one's loading. Okay, so it actually has its own applet, which is, it will give you all of this information. We're gonna switch back. So it has its own box. It'll give you your high and your low for your, your temperature. You can set it up for Fahrenheit or Celsius. It, it's got quite a bit of flexibility. And then this last one is your GPU, and the app is called GPUs with a Z. And it'll give you how many watts you're using, um, fan if it has it, what your, you know, what your speed that you're running at, max speed, and then it'll also give you your temp. Well, that pretty much wraps up the review of the Logitech G13. Um, what I really wanted to cover in that section was how the keys work, how you can program it, how the software works. 
as we move forward in the next couple episodes and start getting into the couple other devices that I use, you're gonna start noticing how all three work together. And that's really what I wanna show you guys over the whole series, is how the game board works with the mouse and the keyboard, and how when you change your profile here on the game board, from StarCraft to Fallout 4, um, or any other game or application, it doesn't just change the keys and the profile on the game board, it actually will change the keys, the programmable keys on my mouse, and it can also change the programmable keys on the keyboard. Uh, you can also change the colors and all that kind of stuff. So it allows me to control all three devices with one piece of software or one device uh, when I'm switching back and forth. That's the beauty that I like about the Logitech stuff. I haven't had a chance to play with some of the Corsair and the Razer and you know some of the other keyboards and mice and stuff systems and what their software does it may do the same thing but i'm going to focus on the logitech stuff I, i've always been a fan of logitech i've never had a problem with their any of their equipment so i've kind of I've stuck with them over the years so as we move through kind of pay attention to how these work together i'm going to try to really focus on some of that stuff as we get further along and um, hope you enjoy the series <music>